Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. Uh, if you remember last time, we were doing some testing, specifically of uh, twist eyes. If you haven't seen it, you should probably watch it. I'll go ahead and put a little tag right here, go back, because I'm going to reference it during these tests. So since that video, I've had a lot of requests for me to test haywire twists. Haywire twists looks like that, and you can see it's a series of loose twists uh, finished off with barrel twists. At the end of the testing on the last video, I really considered these haywire twists and whether they were doing anything more than just the barrels. Or maybe the barrels aren't doing anything and the haywire twists are really the strength. Uh, or maybe all you really get is the strength of the barrels. So let's get back out into the main shop and break some stuff. So what I've done is I've taken uh, number 9 wire and I've made a series of uh, haywire twist uh, arrangements. And these samples all hold the haywire twists about the same five or six twists, but they change the barrel twists, kind of like we did in the last video. And I also made some assemblies uh, of the number 12. This is the 174 pound stuff that I used on the last video. I wanted to see if I could get this size wire to break in the wire and not have the eyes sort of dismantle themselves. So let's get to the tests. Okay, same arrangement as last time. I've got my uh, winch set up. I've got my crane scale set up and I'm using my phone uh, to capture the load when it breaks. The first wire is uh, number nine wire, which is uh, rated uh, on the package as 108 pound. And I've got it equally twisted haywire and barrel twist, so five and five of each and uh, the same thing on both ends. And I'm going to put some uh, masking tape on it because I've got a feeling that I'm going to have little pieces flying all over the place. It did break in the wire itself. That's good news. So uh, it does bring it to maximum strength. That's different from that last test. So that shows that haywire twists add a lot of friction, therefore allows this thing to pull to its full strength of the wire. Okay, so now that I know it'll actually pull to the strength of the wire, what I'm going to do is I want to find out how many barrel twists is enough. I reduce it from six down to three barrels on this one. Uh, let's find out. Now the top one is full. It's six and six. But the bottom one is six haywire and three barrel twists. So let's give it a shot. Three twists was enough to bring it to maximum load. Let's go to two. Okay, this is the number nine wire with only two barrel twists on one end. Pounds. Tear that baby out. Okay, and here we go. Okay, two barrel twists brings it to full load. Let's go down to one. Okay, now we're down to one barrel twist on this number nine wire. Go ahead and change it to pounds, and let's load it up. So one barrel twist did the job. How about zero barrel twist? Okay, here it is. No barrel twist on this one, a standard setup on this one. Okay, now we're down to zero barrel twists on one end and a standard arrangement on the other end. Okay, <laughs> look at that. It broke inside the barrel twists of the one with barrel twists. See? And the end only with haywire twists held perfectly. It didn't even begin to slide. Now I'm going to use the number 12 wire. This is the exact wire I used on that last video where I only use barrel twists. Uh, so I'm a little spooked. This thing's going to go up to like 200 pounds and there's going to be a lot of rebound. So I'm going to have to come up with some, with some kind of safety feature. Okay, so I've connected a bungee cord to this so that as, uh, as it gets sprung up, it doesn't go everywhere. Hopefully it won't knock me in the skull. 
Okay, this is the number 12 wire, the 174-pound wire. Put it on pounds. Let's see if it breaks in the wire. Bungie did the job. Okay, so there it is broke off in the wire something I could not get it to do just with barrel twists all right let's go take a look at the data so again some pretty surprising results considering this zero barrel twist wire held up nearly as good as the rest and while 74.2 is lower than all of them it's still within some reasonable tolerance of what you would expect in scatter and some of the data scatter. So what does that mean? Do we stop using barrel twists? Or maybe it just means haywire twists are better than barrel twists if you use them inside your lure. So that's the next test. Now I want to test how few of these haywire twists I can use and maybe that's all I need inside my lures. Let's see. All right, so just to speed things up, I went ahead and did some uh, preliminary testing on just the uh, haywire twist to form internal uh, wire harnesses for your lures. And what I find is that really you got to have five, four is okay, five haywire twists to really hang on there and make it worthwhile. Otherwise, it doesn't have any real strength. Uh, and when you when you do that, you essentially you create a long wire twist area where it becomes difficult to form it inside your lure so conclusion is uh, in the lure i'm going to stick with the tight barrel twists and for uh through wire that's probably the better way to go so if you've got uh, a straight shot through your lure i would go with the haywire twist and you can put a couple of barrel twists in there just in case you're not really uh all that confident in my testing anyway thanks for watching i hope this answers some of the questions you guys had and it certainly gave me some food for thought and i really didn't think it was going to go this way happy new year by the way and don't forget i'm at like 920 some subscribers and when i hit a thousand uh i'll be doing the drawing for the giveaway for those three lures so if you haven't entered for the giveaway go to this video which is the giveaway video and be sure to leave a comment in there. Just follow the instructions. See you in the next video. And subscribe if you haven't.